and gentlemen, we have some very shocking and startling information declassified just from the government and NASA. And now the Clark Johnson is going to be talking about what's going on. Thanks, Dick. Breaking news. You're all going to die. Bloody horrible death. Deal with it. Uh, but we do have a solution. We will be going up to Mars. And we'll be going up there on our new high-tech classified spaceship that uh, Pedro is going to tell you about later. But for now, I'm going to tell you who gets to go up to Mars with us. You get to go depending on what you contribute most to society. People like doctors, scientists, architects, engineers, healthy, pe healthy living people, teachers, I don't know about teachers, astronomers, and you know, the basic or essentials of today's, today's society, like I said. First things first, for the first, first, uh, hundred, first six months, we're going to send up uh, doctors, astronomers, architects and scientists to make sure everything's okay up there, make sure it's habitat, habitational to, uh, to people. Uh, here's a little bit about Mars. You guys may not know, not know a lot about it, but um, soil composition is mostly uh, oxides. Half of half the surface composition is silicon dioxide, which is found in sand here on our beaches. 16% is iron oxide, which is found in rust. Doesn't sound too safe, but uh, it also appears to contain peroxides, which are in bleach. Oh, well, we'll get rid of that. The atmosphere of Mars is 100 times thinner than the Earth, which makes it more susceptible to space particles, meteors, and, uh, doesn't sound too safe, but, hey, it's better than here on Earth, because you're all going to die a bloody death, like I said before. All right, the dust particles in the air scatter light, scatter the light, which give it a butterscotch color, so you're going to have to start dealing with the butterscotch color. If you're going, I mean. 95.3% uh, is carbon dioxide, which makes sodas frizzy. 2.7% is nitrogen. 1.6% is argon. And there seems to be large amounts of carbon dioxide, because, which give a, give a greenhouse effect. But uh, Mars' atmosphere is too thin to have a greenhouse effect like we here have on Earth. So that's something we don't have to deal with. The planet right now isn't fit for human habitation, but we can deal with it. We're going to have things like rovers, biodomes, bunks, uh, medical facilities. Now that we're going to have a brand new type of uh, lifestyle here, we're going to have to find a nice leader. So we're going to have a uh, democratic type government, which is going to be run by one person and maybe a few uh, consuls to help him out with his decisions. Who's going to be in charge? Yours truly. Where I'm gonna run everything, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be running things. You know what I'm saying? So uh, yeah. I'm gonna be uh, in charge, like I said before. Uh, I'm a nice, kind guy. I like to make yeah. I make productive decisions, and uh, it doesn't matter. I'm in charge. Dick, back to you. First, what we're gonna do is we're gonna send up a ship for the first six months. Then we're gonna set up another ship after that yeah. for the supplies. Then send up a nor send up normal people as much as we can. We need as much people as we can. And then we start scientists, everything. Get as much people get as much people in the ships as we possibly can. Uh, at sunrise, we launch. So if you are very far from Cape Canaveral, which is where we'll be filming, uh, if you live very far from Cape Canaveral, where we'll be launching, you probably won't even make it to the launch, and you should just wait to die a horrible, horrible death. Uh, first of all, what will probably happen is, unless you're right under the meteor, then you'll be killed instantly. But if you're not, what will happen is the clouds will darken, and sunlight won't be able to get in, all plant life will die, you will starve yourself to death, probably burn. You'll have severe burn from the blast. Um, if you're near bodies of water, there'll be a giant tidal wave about 100 miles wide, and it will throw your body into the side of a building, and you will splatter like my loogie does. And let me tell you, if you live in, the, if you live in, a, in a warm climate, uh, it'll probably freeze over. And uh, let me think, what else happened? Oh, all sea life will die pretty quickly, along with all plant life and everything. But I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let me get back here. Uh, passenger accommodations. People will have their own little rooms, just a bed to sleep. 
don't have much space so people don't get much hygiene, there will be room for showers, one for men and one for women. We will pack enough food for the trip and enough when we get there for about one month and then another ship sent up. If people get sick, no. if people get sick on the ride, uh, they are going to die. We're going to throw them off. Yeah, we're going to throw them off. And uh, well, let me just tell you what happens to you when you exit a ship and enter space. Uh, you die pretty much instantly, but your body turns into an immediate popsicle. And if you were to get with an asteroid or anything, your body would shatter like the front windshield of a car. So don't get sick on the ride, because you do not want to be a popsicle floating around in space. And being in space, you will never stop floating, because space is infinite. So you will float and float and float forever. Back to the Clark. Now we're going to have Pedro Martinez going to tell you about uh, some of the uh, landing, uh, landing procedures and etc. Pedro. We'll be landing on Mars. We're going to be looking for a flat, easy place to land. So then we don't have any problems with the landing. Um, the ship has long, big legs, which comes down and then lands. Digs into the Mars, so then the ride is comfortable, the landing is fine, nothing is broken or damaged. Exploring the area, how are we going to do that? We have rovers, which we will be driving. Um, and then we'll have testing. We'll be testing the soil and air and other natural resources. Um, how will the food, how will the food be done? Well, after testing the soil on Mars, we'll see if it's fertile enough to have cropping. If not, we'll have soil from the earth in which we will be growing crops such as corn, Tomato. tomatoes, Except. Bud. grapes, and, bud. and herbs. Um, the earth soil will be brought with, how will we breathe? That's probably what you're thinking right now. We'll have, in the domes, we're having a huge biodome, and um, air will be there. That's where we'll be growing all of our crops in the biodome. And the rovers will be underneath the ship, coming down. There'll be about 20 of them, so we can easily get enough, get a lot of land in. And those, they'll be powered by the sunlight. In the biodomes, there will be housing. And in the housing, there'll be cafeteria and a medical room, just in case anyone gets their <laughs> Um. <laughs> Later on, po there's a high possibility that homes will be built inside the biodomes and possibly outside, depending on the materials and how strong it is, depending on how bad it is on Mars. Uh, this just in. I'll be, me and Pedro will be going to Mars, living a graceful life, while you, dick, you're going to be staying here, and you're going to die a horrible death, just like every other civilization. <laughs> uh, what? Uh, no. <laughs>